Hey guys, welcome to the Rethink Sales Show. My name is Derek Kelly. I'm honored to be joined by Jim Shorkey. And Jim, I've started to make this connection that I think as people listen to this show and start to see what we're talking about, they start to realize that sales is actually personal development. That the best salespeople continue to work on self-development and actually becoming better at sales, becoming a better entrepreneur has a lot to do with how much you work on yourself. Correct. Do you find that to be true? Have you seen that over the years of not just doing it yourself, but training other people? Yes. Of seeing probably hundreds of salespeople, connecting yes. with them. What have you seen in the people who, so I'm ask you a direct question, the people who work on themselves in multiple different areas and the people who don't? Not that we're being harsh on the people who don't, but what's the differentiator from the people who you can tell have spent time working on their own personal development? To the audience, let me make a statement here. Mm -hmm. And you tell me if you, you agree or disagree, okay? Things get better when I get better. But if that's true, you have to decide that, if that's true. And if it is true, does it make sense that things get worse when I get worse? And is it possible to get worse? Is it possible to develop bad habits? Sure. Is it possible to develop a negative attitude? Is it possible to show up late? Is it possible to not be groomed properly? Is it possible to use foul language in front of a customer, which is completely not what we should be doing? If it's possible that things get better when I get better, does it also make sense that it's possible that things get worse when I get worse? And so I consider being a top flight salesman like I am to be an incredible honor. To me, it's a form of art. And if you think that salespeople, and I can say people because it's male and female, if you think that they're not the center of the universe, then you better do some research because mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you they are. If you took away all salesmanship out of the American economy, we'd be in the worst possible depression that we could ever imagine. That's a fact. Do your own homework. Do your own research. If you look at the number of jobs that are filled by salespeople, insurance, cars, real estate, go through the math and look it up. If you do a Google on that, you'll be shocked at the number. It's a goofy number. Selling is a really important part of the American economy. I'm not even going to think about the world. I don't care about, about the world in that regard. I'm going to care about the American economy. You're selling, you're in a position of honor because that product that you're selling was made by somebody. Yeah. And that person who made that product that you're selling, that's how they pay their mortgage. That's how they pay their car payment. That's how they feed their family. So it really, when you look at it from that perspective, it really does become a mission. A true mission. Like, I'm supporting this person from wherever that worked on the assembly line, that made the tires, that made the radio that's in the car. Hold on, hold on. There's so many people that are employed directly or indirectly by the automobile business that it's unbelievable. And, and you can look this up for yourself. It's literally shocking. And then I sell the car, I'm supporting the dealership. I sell the car, I'm supporting the mechanics that are working on the car at the dealership. My own personal life in terms of this is how I pay my bills, this is how I pay my mortgage payment. So every time I make money, I can put it back into circulation and benefit the economy at large. And so, you know, selling is a really important profession. And if what I say is true, let's assume that I am in fact a salesman. That is my career, that is my job. I'm a salesman, I sell cars. Right? Things get better when I get better. If that's true, who gets better as a result of me getting better? Everybody you touch. I obviously get better because I'm going to sell more cars, but then all the downstream effects of selling those cars, everybody has a gain, maybe a little one, but still it's a gain. So the better job we can do of selling, okay, the better for the world. And when you're that guy that gets a pay raise because the car sales were X, versus what they were before, that's pretty important. And so the people, like for example, uh, we're, we have Kia. So mm -hmm. the people that were connected with Kia are all incentivized based on the performance of the dealership. The dealership is incentivized based on the performance of the dealership. And then 
the dealership and some its employees based on the performance of the dealership at large and their share of that. So there's so many benefits to getting better beyond yeah. just selling more cars in terms of that, that specific of it. Yeah. But the people that benefit downstream from the selling of more cars, it's a huge position of honor. And so I was uh, always very proud and still very proud of the fact that I am the world's greatest salesperson. You find me the person that's a better salesperson than Jim Shorkey. I want to meet them. I want to have a conversation with them because I'll pick their brain, take some of their ideas and get even better yet. And if you spend about five minutes with me, you'll get that idea very quickly. And half an hour, you'll be buying something from me. Yeah. And how do you see that transition? So often people come in when they're new to sales and they're in this almost, I remember doing this at the beginning of my business, almost like trying to figure out, this will get emotional and deep, but 10, 12 years ago, I almost felt like I had to prove myself at the beginning of, I had to convince me that I can do this, Yeah. right? And I'm well, sure with all salespeople, there's a starting place, but then it feels like as long as you keep working on yourself and getting rid of those bad habits and all the things that we teach inside of Rethink U 2.0, there's almost a shift to, okay, I don't have to prove myself anymore. I'm good at this. I'm going to keep learning to get better, but I'm good. But now, now I need to keep working on what's next, right? Yeah. And then there's a shift from I'm starting out to I'm pretty good at this to now I'm great at this and now I'm training other people. I, right. I don't You've seen that process in person yes. more than yes. I have, but I imagine it's a scale like that where well, people go be. from. It could be. Right? Yeah. Well, okay, so results are the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's understand that. Right. And I would politely disagree with you that you really don't have to pr pr prove yourself. Right. You do have to convince yourself. Mm. And Napoleon Hill, one of my favorite quotes of all time is, desire back by faith knows no such word as impossible. impossible. Yeah. So impossible is selling cars. I don't know how to sell cars. I never right. did it before. So I'm going to, I decide I'm going to do that. So I have to convince myself that I can't. And the, the whole process of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which I've read 160 times, the whole process is all about me convincing me that I can do whatever it is that, that needs to be done. And so my first step in any kind of a goal achievement type scenario is to find out, has anybody done this before? I don't know anything about selling cars, nothing. And I want to sell cars. Has anybody done that before, gone from nothing to selling cars? Absolutely. Of course. They're all over the place. So if really I do want to do this, then I have a goal, selling cars, and I'm going to seek expert counsel to find out what it is that I need to do. So I'm going to learn, and I'm going to buy books about selling, yeah. uh, probably buy one in particular. I might go to my, for example, I'm at the dealership, and I just talked to Mike Cross. He's the general manager of the Chevrolet store in Murraysville. And so Mike hired me. We're getting into this understanding. I say, Mike, do you have a go-to book that you'd recommend for sales? He says, I do. So what is that book? He says, this is the book. I'm going to go get that book. Yeah. And then I'm going to be able to read it and discuss it with Mike and say, I don't understand chapter one. Tell me what the, oh, geez, now I do. And so I'm going to go through the book. I'm going to read it, maybe read it a couple times. And I'm going to follow Mike's lead on that book. Yeah. Okay, seek expert counsel. So the ex expert counsel would be Mike Cross but it would also be the book. So my first idea about going from zero, I don't know anything, is to, I'm gonna keep giving, okay? Yep. My form of giving is gonna be initially by learning and following directions. And then when I do start talking to clients, I'm going to give the very best service that I can. I'm gonna follow all the rules. I'm gonna dot the I's and cross the T's. I'm gonna sell a car, which is a result. So I sold one car. Only problem with that is it took me six months to sell one <laughs> car. Not such a good result. So I got to keep working on how do I get from one to two to three to four to 10 to 20. I would quickly surmise that what is a good number to sell at this particular dealership? Mike Cross would say the top salesman for the last 30 days sold 25 cars. Okay. And then furthermore, what did the best salesman sell for the past six months? So he sold 250. So I have two goals. I have 25 in a month and I have 250 for six months. So these become my goals. I'm, I hit these goals. Well, I'm going to set a goal. I'm going to have reasons why that make me cry. So I have to really think about what it is that I'm doing this for. It could be getting on a debt. It could be a certain trip I want to go on, whatever. I got to figure out what is the reason why that I'm doing this that makes me emotional, makes me cry. And then I'm going to seek expert counsel to figure out how I fill the gap of right now I know nothing to I know so much that I can, in fact, sell 25 cars a month. Because if it can be done, well, that means I can do it too. Yeah. And so 
that's the essence of thinking grow rich is me convincing me that I can, which is where for me, yes, I can comes from. Sure. So then I go to work on that, but it's all about me upfront giving and with the assumption that things get better when I get better. So I'm going to keep yeah. working on getting better. And then going further, you ask another question like, okay, what do I do when I've been doing it for 20 years? Same thing. Things get better when I get better. Yep. What's the advanced book I can read? What else can I do? Can, can I set up some sort of a networking thing? Can I set up some sort of, I don't know. I'd have to seek expert counsel to figure yeah, out what yeah. are those. So I'm selling 25 cars a month. Mm -hmm. I am making a lot of money. I am successful. I am out of debt. But can I take it to 30? Right. Is anybody else selling 30? Yeah, let's go talk to him. What's he doing? What's she doing? And so I just keep working that. Things get better when I get better is a concept that applies today, tomorrow, one year, two years, yeah. 50 years from now. Yeah, I'm still in the automobile business. I am the general manager of the store. And so when things get better, I'm a general manager now, I get paid bonuses. Right. So it's always going to be the same thing. Yep. Yeah, and, and then you get to the level like where you're at, where you've been successful and you want to teach other people. I do. Right? You want to go back and invest. I think it's important. Right? Invest in people. And so you just see this kind of cycle of we all start somewhere new, right? And then we get better. And then we get better again. And then we go, like you're saying, and get into the advanced books and the advanced yep. trainings and start networks. And you and I talk a lot about mastermind alliances and having yeah, people big, big part in of different networks. Rich, yeah. And what that does is it starts to make you recognize, okay, and we always bring it back to how do we help one more person, right? It's, I want to get to 20, I'm at 25 cars a month. I want to get to 30 because I want to help those extra five people. Okay. Yeah. Give me one job. One, only one, one job that somebody is born to do. I don't know. There's no such job. Yeah. Everybody who has a job, there was a day yes. when they didn't know anything about that job. That's right. And that day was a tough day. Yeah. Cause you're, you're, you're confused. You don't know what you're doing. You don't even know where the bathroom is. You're like, well, man, you're, you're all a lot of anxiety. You're, you're uncomfortable. You mm -hmm. don't know anybody. You don't know what you're doing. Everybody on the planet, everybody can learn. Okay. Everybody can learn. And so whatever that job, I didn't know anything about YouTube. What's YouTube. Yeah. We're yeah. doing a YouTube video right now. I didn't know anything about Facebook. What's Facebook. Chuck and Derek got me involved with Facebook. Derek's got me involved with YouTube. I don't know the first thing about it. Social media. What in the heck is that? That doesn't even interest me. It doesn't interest me. Right. I'm not interested in social media. Jim, what are you talking about? You have 5,000 followers on Facebook. What are you talking about? That's part of the price of entry. So in order for me to do this help thing, things person. get better yeah. when I get yeah. better. I want to help people. <clears throat> then Facebook became one of those ways to yeah. do that. Yeah. Was it something that I wanted to do? That I was I born? Oh, you know what? I want to be on Facebook someday. I didn't even know what Facebook was five years ago. So no, I didn't know. Yeah. But I learned and I'm learning and I'm continuing to learn. And I still yeah. have a lot of learning to do. So yeah. as I sit here right now, I'm going to be 67 in a while and a little bit here. If I want the results to improve at 68, then I got to get better. <laughs> and I understand that. So for you, lovely and I love, the, I love my salespeople. I love them. They know I love them. If you're looking for the results to improve in uh, 24, you got to get better. Uh, Albert Einstein's definition of insanity was doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. That's craziness. So I don't care where you're at. You're selling 30 cars a month. You're a rock star. I love you. I give you a lot of credit. But what's wrong with 35 a month? And if you can maybe make a few adjustments to your process, maybe you could get it to 35. You said, well, I don't really need the money. That extra five cars a month is going to pay you what? Multiply that times 12. That's going to pay you what? Why don't you develop a mission then? Mm -hmm. Say, once I get it to this, I'm going to donate whatever I get above that to this cause. Wow. Oh, boy. Now we got something that makes us cry, makes us powerful. It's a lot of stuff. If you can't get better, I would suggest that you get better. What the heck? Why not? And if you can't get better, then you can't get better. But it, I, I said this to you the one day. I said, can I at least try? Yeah. My goal is 122. The oldest documented living person in the history of the planet right. is 122. The chances of me living to 122 is probably about a trillion to one, if that it's low it's probability. Yeah. But yeah. can't I at least try? And yeah. what does that look like? Right. That's where the expert counsel comes into yeah. play. Yeah. So why do we have to talk about only sales? Let's put yep. parenting into it. Uh -huh. Take sales. Let's put being a spouse into it. Yes. Or su substitute from yeah. Self. yeah. Physical health. Mm -hmm. Mental health. Yeah. If it is true that things get better when I get better, 
then should I work on my mental health? Because if my mental health is better, then I'm going to perform better. Yeah. I if my physical yeah. health is better, then I'm going to perform better. If my marital life or just relationship life in general is better, does it make sense that I'm going to do better yeah. no matter what that looks like? Same thing with children. What if we could raise children that would go out and take what we're doing and 10 exit? In other words, they're going to have 10 times the impact wow. that we have. So in other words, we are the parents and we impacted on our children because we did such a great job. What if they went out and 10 X their children versus what we did? Holy yeah. cow. Would that be, that would be such a joyful story. Yeah. Like the reason that my grandchildren are doing so well is because I taught my children yeah. so well. That's powerful. So yeah, we are talking about cells. I agree. But this could, you could substitute, and Napoleon Hill tells us this in Thinking Grow Rich, you could substitute whatever you want in to that from a point of view of uh, being uh, a better person. Yeah. And it, 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 it's a whole variety of, of, of goals and reasons why they make us mm -hmm. cry mm -hmm. to really enter into it. But it's life. It's yeah. Life. So guys, like and subscribe. We also have a sale going on for Rethink You 2.0 right now. Click the link below. We'd love for you to join us. We've had tons of people join us over the yes. past month. Jim and yeah. I were just talking about how many people have been going through it's Rethink life -changing. You 2.0 life -changing. right now and messaging you and I and saying, yeah. this yeah. is really great stuff. It is. How do I help get this in the hands of more people? Well, if people, people yeah. do want to know how I did what I did, uh -huh. that's how yeah. I did what I did. Right. That is the blueprint. Yeah. So learning yeah. what it has looked like for Jim to succeed, it's changed my... We always talk about the funeral test. I know whenever this guy goes... That I'm gonna stand at his funeral bed and say, "Man, this guy changed my life." Yeah, that's that's Powerful. not me being hyperbolic just because we're sitting in a room together, but it's that's real. And I yeah. hope that my downstream of people that I've impacted, yeah, is, they will is the same. They will because you're telling the truth. Yeah, we're telling the truth here today. Uh, th things get better when you get better. That's the truth. They may not get as better as you want them to get, but they right. will get better. They'll move an inch. And if we can move it an inch, we can move it two. If we can move it two inches, we can move it a foot. And we just keep working at it. That's all I really did. I just kept working at it, asking questions, reading books, inch by inch. But pretty soon those inches become feet, become yards, become miles. And I, 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 again, I don't necessarily have credibility with you. And I understand that. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that I've earned the right to have credibility with you. Yeah. So I would challenge you to trust me. Look up the Jim Shorkey Family Auto Group, look at what it is, go through some of their different sites and whatnot, and just look yeah. at it and think, wow, this is pretty darn cool. You'll see some neat stuff in there. And then understand that in 1998, that same company that you're looking at was bankruptcy imminent. Yeah. And so this is how I moved from bankruptcy imminent to what it is today. And then the second aspect of this is that, again, you have to trust me in order to pull this off, but I had a really serious stroke a year ago, I should have died. I should not be sitting here talking to you right now. And even being alive, I should be compromised, but I'm not. And the reason I'm not is because I'm using the same exact principles that I used to move from bankruptcy imminent to what the Jim Shirky family group is today. I'm using those same principles to reclaim my body and I can prove it. I can prove it. So if you don't trust me, I'm okay with that. You don't have to trust me, but just look at the results. If results are in fact the name of the game, then look at the results. And I've had this conversation with many people try to give me advice, which is okay. But my thought is always, let's compare financial statements. Let's do that. You show me your balance sheet. I'll show you my balance sheet. A balance sheet is a statement. In essence, is a statement of net worth. You show me your income statement and I'll show you mine. An income statement is a statement of earnings versus expenses. Okay. And I'll stand on mine. I think you know that I'm right. I think you listeners know that I'm right. You're talking to the real deal here. Yeah. You're talking to the real deal. And I can document everything I tell you. I can prove it. So if you want to challenge me, go ahead. I'll prove it to you. Yeah. Yeah. So just... Thank you guys for listening. Sales really is the process of personal development. And you it can just hear throughout that process that there's also a humility. One of, you, one of my favorite things you say is, I want to keep it very humble. That's so, self-improvement though. Yeah. If I'm arrogant, that's a recipe for going bankrupt. And believe me, 
I know it is because I was arrogant and I was almost bankrupt. Mm -hmm. But so the process of moving from arrogance to keep it very humble, that is an improvement. Yeah. I think everybody here would agree with that. Yeah. Like, and it, it was probably harder than you make. You make it sound so simple, but it was yeah. probably way harder. When than you're that. arrogant, people <laughs> move away from you. When you're selling, do you really want people moving away from you? Or do you want them moving towards you? So if arrogance is a deal breaker, isn't keep it very humble a deal maker? Yeah. If we understood that sure. as salespeople, why don't we stop the bullshit? Because when you're arrogant, people are leaving your room. When you keep it very humble, they're waiting in line to get in. It's true. They don't want any part of your arrogance. But when you're humble and you're helpful and you're giving, people are grateful. And if we can increase our keep it very humble and lower our arrogance, does it make sense that probability-wise, we're going to move from selling 10 out of 100 to selling 15 out of 100, which is a massive improvement. That's a 50% improvement. And for those of you that are in the car business, if we can move from 10 to 30, we're talking about a massive increase. So keep it very humble. It's not a catchy, cute thing to say. It's a strategy. Yeah. It's a real strategy. If you understand that, then you're on to something.